All right, I admit that title's clickbait. So yeah, during the Beyond the Lighted Stage Rush documentary, Giddy Lee said this. I don't want to play in Rush without those other two guys. You know, there's no replacing <laughs> anybody in this band. It's just not possible. It is the band, the three of us, you know. Okay, so he made it pretty clear at that time, if any of the member members of the band were missing or didn't want to play anymore in the band, then there would be no Rush. It would be over. So 2012 comes along, and it's the end of... Oh, 2013, the end of the Clockwork Angels tour, and pretty much Neil thought he was done. He thought that that was the end of his drumming career. Lo and behold, Alex and Getty kind of convinced him, I think it was mostly Alex, who kind of convinced him to come back to drumming, and this was his reaction. And then that night in my hotel room, I had the worst attack of Tourette's you have ever heard. It was like, trapped, you know, stomping around and cursing and swearing. <laughs> So yeah, he didn't want to tour anymore. He didn't want to play anymore, but they convinced him and he became his own replacement. <laughs> so he was the drummer for Rush for the last tour, which we affectionately, affectionately know as the R40 tour, the actual Down the Tubes tour, <laughs> the tour that signified the end of the band, unfortunately. Um, so that was that. Uh, but perchance to dream, Many Rush fans in many Rush forums still held out the hope that Rush would be together again. And obviously we know that when Neil Peart passed away in 2020, that put an end to that. So no more Rush for sure. Neil's not with us anymore. However, there are still forums that discuss the band getting together somehow and kind of like being Rush, like getting and throwing out these drummers that could replace Neil in the band. And yes, I'm aware that not every one of those posts on those forums are saying that it should be Rush again with a different drummer. You know, a lot of them are just saying that they'd like Alex and Getty to get together and pick a drummer and play Rush songs. Or I've even heard some wanting to do uh, some Las Vegas residency or something like that. And the band have pretty much spoken against doing that kind of thing as well. And not only that, but a lot of fans are like get upset. It's actually become a point of contention amongst some Rush fans. And when the topic is brought up about a drummer playing with Getty and Alex, particularly Rush songs, uh, there are a lot of adamant fans who are like, you know, saying, let it go. It's never going to happen. Uh, Getty said it wasn't there was no Rush anymore. Just let it drop. And others are saying, well, you know, it wouldn't necessarily, they wouldn't have to call it Rush. They would just uh, get together with the drummer, play whatever songs they want. Maybe some songs from Victor, which is Alex's, Alex Lifeson's solo record, and, or Getty Lee's solo record, My Favorite Headache, and some Rush songs. You know, because the fans are just dying for live music from, <laughs> from Rush, uh, from Alex and Getty, no matter what. I mean, they just want to see him out there playing. And um, a reference in a previous video, a project that Alex is doing with another band called Envy of None. That should be interesting when it comes out. But it doesn't seem like Getty's doing anything musically that we can tell. Um, he may be, but we don't, we don't know that yet. In any case, we have to come to the conclusion, guys and gals, that Rush is no more. The band is no more. We have their history, uh, and we have lots to talk about, lots to celebrate about the band, and for many years to come. So that's not going to go away. And we have all the Rush covers, the Rush tribute bands. And, you know, there, there's a lot there for us Rush fans. So we need not worry that uh, Gideon and Alex may never get together again to play Rush music. That could be. If that's the case, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, I'm completely okay with that. They don't have to do anything else ever again. They've done pretty much enough. You know, they've, they've retired from that. So I think it would behoove us as Rush fans to respect the choices that they make. And I think for the most part, Rush fans do respect the choices that they make. Pretty much musically, all of the choices they've made over the years have been pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to name some controversial ones, or maybe I might. But in any case, uh, Rush is no more. However, one can speculate. So what if Gideon Alex, if they decided to take that route, they, they decided to um, get together maybe for a night or two, 
some like smaller venue and play some rush tunes with some you know with a drummer that could play Neil's parts now here's the thing there are lots of drummers that play rush songs and the problem with Neil is that his drumming was not about technicality it was about feel and creativity and that's the dichotomy of Neil Peart's drumming because many would speculate that Neil is a very technical drummer and yeah he may be a technical drummer but when you try to play him no one can sound like him I mean some come close but just no one can sound like how he how he played the drums and I kind of tried to think about why is that the case and I, I kind of came to a, an epiphany about it and I figured it's just that he he played with nuance he played with creativity he played with feel and he didn't always know what the time signature was of the songs he of the parts he created you know he got the music uh, from Alex and Getty he put his drum parts in whatever felt good and then later they would determine oh this is uh, this time signature or that time sig signature it could have been an 11 8 time signature or a 6 8 or or whatever some odd signature but he put it in by feel and later they figured out what the time signature was so I think that's part of the reason why it's so hard to figure out or to play Neil Peart drumming the way Neil Peart played it's like super difficult I don't think anybody really has pulled it off but that being the case, I have my ideas or opinions on who could play, who could play for for Rush for, for Getty and Alex. Let's call it that. Uh, it would be like a Getty Lee and Alex Lyson, a night of Rush music, you know, something like that. And um, they'd have a drummer fill in. So I have three drummers that I think actually could fill in that probably could play in a way that would sound like if Neil Peart was playing. So. Who would be my three picks if they were to do something like that? Mind you, I'm not saying they're going to do something like that. I'm not saying I've heard anything, but just me for fun. I kind of peruse the drumming community and see who I think could fill in the spot. Like I said, I came up to three. Now, before I do that, I want to mention some drummers that I would not recommend that people have the names have come up. One, and I might be killed for this, is Mike Portnoy. Actually, Mike Portnoy, formerly of Dream Theater, I actually do not think he would be a good fit for that. Now, it's not a not that he can't play Neil's parts; he can play them. But I've noticed throughout all of his drumming career, no matter what situation he's in, he it's just it sounds like Mark Mike Portnoy. <laughs> so uh, playing in Dream Theater, you know, he has his style. But him, when I've heard him playing Rush songs. He just can't help himself putting his Mike Portnoy parts in there. And it kind of throws off the feel of the song a little bit um, as far as it sounding like a Rush song. It does sound like Mike Portnoy filling in uh, or Mike, Mike Portnoy playing the part. So I wouldn't recommend as much as I love his drumming. I mean, he's he's an, uh, another phenomenal drummer that I think he plays with more feel than I think people give him credit for. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that... Uh, he would be a good fit um, to play uh, Rush songs. I'm kind of laughing because so many people would like to see that, but I'm actually not one of them. Also, I wouldn't pick anybody from the Foo Fighters to play Rush songs, neither Dave Grohl nor Taylor Hawkins. I, I, I don't think I'd be a good fit either. Um, again, the same problem they'd suffer of that Mike Portnoy su would suffer from is that they would sound too much like themselves. It would sound like just the guys filling in, playing the songs, and it sounds like the substitute doing the doing the parts. And um, they probably could. I don't know about Dave, but maybe Taylor Hawkins could pretty much come close uh, to playing Neil's parts. Uh, but it it would, it would they would sound too much like them. So uh, as good as those drummers are, I also would not recommend those. I also would not recommend Justin Bieber. <laughs> Hey, he's from Canada. I've seen him do the uh, double-handed crossover uh, single stroke roll, uh, but no, I'm, I would not recommend him either. Now, there's a couple of other drummers that played, that auditioned for Dream Theater back like 10 or 12 years ago now, like Virgil Donati and Thomas Lang. Two phenomenal, phenomenal drummers. Just look them up on YouTube and see anything they've done or anything they're doing. They're incredibly technical. And that's why I wouldn't recommend them either, because they're too technical. Um, I think 
maybe they could play with feel and maybe Virgil Donati more than Thomas Lang. I think that's a matter of preference there. But I think these drummers also would play too technically and it would sound like them playing Rush songs instead of them sounding instead of it sounding like like Rush. Again, I know it's a tall order to fill, but I'm looking for drummers that I think would play uh, close enough that you would think, you know, it was Neil playing at least at some point. Okay, enough of that. So the number three drummer, the third, I have like a three, two, one. Uh, the number three drummer that I would recommend uh, that, to fill in for for Neil for a night of Rush music with Alex and Getty would be Gavin Harrison of Porcupine Tree. Now, this is the drummer of the three that I know least about, uh, which is something I plan to change. I really want to get into more of Porcupine Tree and see what they're all about. But I've seen Gavin in some of his clinics. I've also seen him um, play some solos, some live music, and he has an incredible amount of feel and he has creativity and he's kind of like an architecture of his drumming. And um, there's something that I wanted to mention before I continue that, you know, some of the really main qualities that I think would qualify a drummer to fill in for Neil would be someone who's very creative, who doesn't focus so much on the technicality of the drumming and also someone who doesn't mind playing with feel, not always knowing what the time sig signature is, uh, but also plays with a lot of power and just blends in so well with their environment that, you know, what they're playing would sound like, you know, what the goal is of playing the songs. And that in this case, it would be uh, sounding like Neil Peer playing, uh, playing Rush songs. And I think Gavin would fill that in really, really nicely. I think he has, um, he's a very thoughtful drummer. Um, he, like I mentioned, he's very creative and I do like the way he composes his drumming. And he's been uh, playing for, for bands, um, I think he's, he's been touring or is touring with King Crimson. And that is a band that's very technical, um, where that shows that he has the chops to do it. But I've also seen him and heard uh, other places where he's definitely creative enough and has that feel that I think he would fill in nicely uh, to play or to re replace, let's put that in quotes, Neil Peart uh, to play with, uh, play with the boys. So number three on my list, Gavin Harrison of Porcupine Tree. <laughs> number two of my top three drummers that I think would fill in really nicely to play uh, with Alex and Getty for a night of rush would be Todd Suckerman of Styx. This is a drummer that I didn't discover till way later. And oh my goodness, he is an absolute phenomenal drummer. He plays traditional grip and also match grip. And I'm not really a fan of traditional grip. I think it's more flashy than anything else and it's very stylized, but I really love the way Todd uh, plays traditional grip because he plays with such power no matter which grip he's using. And the very few, when I see drummers play traditional grip, yeah, it's very finesse oriented and I like finesse, but um, Neil Peart was a power drummer. And if you're gonna play traditional grip and match grip, let's see it with power. And Todd Zuckerman, wow, he plays with a tremendous amount of power, no matter which grip he's using, traditional or matched. And we know that Neil was a fan of both. Uh, he played mostly match grip, uh, but in the later years, obviously he incorporated traditional grip more and more. And Todd Zuckerman definitely has the ability to play with power, uh, no matter what grip he's using. And another thing that's really interesting is, um, you know, when he started playing with Sticks, the drummer he replaced, uh, who unfortunately passed away as well, um, I forget his name, I'll, I'll put it right there who that drummer was. The way he plays Sticks songs, it's with more technicality and creativity than the previous drummer, but it still sounds like Sticks. It's not like, it sounds like, you know, he's playing over the top or he stands out because he's so different and he sounds so different from uh, the way the songs of Sticks sounded previously. He's much more technical, he's, he's more uh, creative, he's, he was a, he's a more advanced drummer than their previous drummer was, but the songs still sound like Sticks. So I think that if he were to sit in to play uh, with Neil and Getty, with, not Neil, <laughs> with Alex and Getty, he would blend in as well. And he was a fan of Neil as well, so I don't think it, it would be where he would want to show off or be too much in the forefront because he's sounding kind of different. I would think he'd want to play Neil's parts as best as he could the way Neil played them. 
And, you know, it's okay to throw in a little bit of your personality as long as it doesn't detract from who you're covering. That's my philosophy on playing drum covers anyway. So I think his brilliant drumming, his technicality, his creativity, I mean, he, he's, a, he's a ferocious drummer. He's, and you, you can look him up on YouTube as far as the solos that he's done and the songs he plays with sticks, some of the concerts. That is just phenomenal, phenomenal drumming. And I think he would do an absolute admirable job. So that would be my number two pick. All right, so before I say my number one drummer that I would think would be the best fit for Neil and Getty um, to play Rush songs on a night of Rush, I'm going to say a couple of um, runner-ups uh, that didn't make the top three. So one of them would be Peter Wildor. He's actually a, a metal drummer who also auditioned to play for Dream Theater. And the reason I pick him as a runner-up is because when I saw him practice, there's a video of him practicing one of Dream Theater's longer songs, and he played it so, per so perfectly, and it sounded like Dream Theater. It didn't sound like him playing with Dream Theater. It sounded like he was part of the band. It was so wonderful the way he played. He didn't get the part, but the way he played, he just blended in with the band. And that's exactly what you're looking for when you want someone to play your songs. If they've been played before, maybe by another drummer or another artist, you kind of want it to sound like it's always sounded. You don't want really, you don't really want it to stand out apart from what the band has always sounded like. And I think Peter Wildor would, would do a fine job filling in. So I think that, you know, as a runner-up, yeah, he, he would do pretty good as well. And I'll have to throw in, got to throw in Brandon Toes, or I think that's how you say his name, Toos. Uh, I apologize uh, how I'm saying his name, but that's the drummer who did that video for Drumio where he played all of Russia's songs on the drums, 170-something drums. Uh, songs. Uh, he played all of them. But yeah, so I mean, if you're going to play all of Rush's songs, I mean, you might as well give the guy a shot. And one other drummer is um, a, a guy that's from the Atlanta area. Um, here's a few clips of him. in a pinch um I'll, I'll fill in anyway enough of that my number one drummer the number one drummer that i think would fill in best with neil and getty to play some rush songs would be marco miniman he is a german drummer and he plays with the aristocrats or aristocats uh, one of those two uh, a three-piece instrumental band he is a, an exceptional drummer actually right now he's my number one favorite drummer alive i mean neil Peter's my all-time favorite drummer but as far as drummers that are alive, at least right now, he's my favorite drummer. I actually got to meet him in a drum clinic. He came to uh, Atlanta several years ago, and uh, I got to take a picture with him. He's a really nice guy, and he, he makes the drums speak, and he is exceptionally creative. He has a lot of power, he's very fast, and he actually reminds me of if Neil Peart were born in this generation of drummers, I think he would be like Marco uh, as a drummer because this drummer, his solos are very creative as well. Not creative in the Neil Peart way, but just uh, very creative solos that are not boring at, at any moment. And obviously that was something that Neil was concerned about when he created it, you know, put together his solos. He didn't want them to be boring. He wanted them to tell a story. Well, Marco is that type of drummer. He's exceptionally, exceptionally creative, exceptionally skilled technically he's I mean I've seen very few drummers that can do the things he can do and 
He's actually um, collaborated with Alex on, on previous projects in the past, so they actually know each other. So he, I think he would sit in and fit nicely. And I think he would play in a way that would respect the music. And whatever he would throw in technically would probably be something that Neil could do as well. So I think that Marco Miniman would be my number one choice to fill in for, for Neil if Getty and Alex were ever going to do something like uh, a Night of Russian Music or something like that. Marco Miniman, he's the man. And like I said, that's just me speculating, just having some fun. I don't expect that ever to happen. Um, but if it were to happen, these would be the top three drummers that I would, I would uh, contact Neil and, and I would con I keep saying Neil. I would contact Alex and Getty and say, "Yo, um, you know, check out these three drummers. Uh, you know, audition them and see which one would, would fit in with you guys. I think they any one of these, would fill in nicely." So that's my spiel on a drummer that could sit in with Getty and Alex to play some Rush songs if they ever wanted to do that. In the meantime, click here on this video if you want to see why I think Neil Peart is my favorite artist of all time. And if you want to watch this video of, a, of one that YouTube recommends you watch, you can watch that as well. This is Omar of All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.